recording in progress. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Really gotta this come down now. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna move it. All right, friends. All right, our comfy, our comfy little lady back there is, <laughs> she's observing for her yoga teacher training hour, so she's not just like, she, she slept here all night, I don't know what's happening back there, <laughs> this is, <laughs> all right. All right, friends, thank you for being here, happy Thursday. Um... Special announcements. I didn't say this on Sunday because I didn't realize it, but um, no classes this weekend. So Saturday and Sunday this weekend, no classes except 7.30 Stiffer Bodies on Saturday is happening. So that's your one chance to get your yoga from Mosaic Yoga this weekend if you need it. Um, let's see. And then not this Saturday, but next Saturday, which is, I believe, if in my mind I have the days right, is July 6th. Um, I have my frequency class here. So it's Saturday night, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. in this space, $30 per person. It's just breathing and sound. So one type of breath the entire time, not a workshop where we learn different breath techniques, but more of an experiential thing where you just do one breath that's intended to take you into your body into your energetic body and allow you to just process energy move it through express it whatever wants to happen so um if you have any questions feel free to ask me after class always and other than that that's all i can think of right now yeah i guess let's just do the thing hi celeste all right, my friends, comfortable seated position, seated meditation. So you can take a moment to find your way there. You can move a little bit, explore your physical body a little bit. Notice how do you feel this morning? How does your body feel this morning? <clears throat> so maybe some bigger movements or maybe just really small, subtle movements. Anything goes. And then when you're ready, find your way into stillness. You can rest your hands in your lap. You can rest your hands down by your sides if you prefer. You can find a mudra with your hands. So maybe you turn your palms to face up and bring your thumbs and index fingers together to touch, your thumbs and middle fingers. Maybe you want to bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. So whatever feels resonant, but just do it on purpose. Eyes closed. Or if you really want to keep your eyes open, prefer to keep your eyes open. See if you can lower and soften your gaze. And then take these first few moments not to do anything. So try to even let go of anticipation of what's coming next. And if anticipation is there, notice that. Let it be there. And just breathe into it. So notice how you feel. Notice how you showed up today, physically, energetically, emotionally, what's going on inside of you. Feel into your breath and your connection to your breath, your awareness of your breath. Next time you inhale, fill up as big as you can. So very intentionally fill up every single space inside of you with prana, with life force energy, hold in that fullness and maybe even take an extra little sip at the top. Big sigh out your mouth, let it out. Ah. All the way to emptiness. And then do that two more times. So inhale, fill up. Pause, and as you hold your breath, see if you can soften around your held breath, relax around it, take that extra little sip of air. And then slide out your mouth, let it go. Good, everyone. 
Last time. So make this the biggest inhale you've taken all morning. Every little space inside expands, inflates, hold. Extra sip or even two extra sips this time. Out your mouth, sigh it out. Very nice. Ujjayi breath, so lips sealed. In and out through your nose, but you really feel and hear your breath as it moves through the back of your throat. See if you can start to create that kind of oceanic sound as you breathe, that gentle whisper noise. You're using the same muscles in your throat as you use when you hum. So it's like you're humming on the inside. Find your own vibration, find your own rhythm, follow it with your awareness. You are more than welcome to stay here a little longer or a lot longer. You can come back here at any time just to reconnect with yourself, with your breath. If you're ready to start moving, transition forward to hands and knees. We're just going to move through a very simple flow to begin. So from your hands and your knees, spread your fingers nice and wide. Inhale, lift your heart, lift your tailbone, gaze forward. Exhale, curl in, so round, chin to chest, navel to spine, and maybe you even lift up to your fingertips as you push the ground away. Then come back to what feels like a happy medium in between the two, nice and neutral spine, tuck your toes, lift your knees, lift your hips, down up. Take a moment for this first one, just to pedal it out. Maybe shift your hips around, side to side. Give your head a little shake or a little nod. Take one more great big inhale into your dog pose. And then as you exhale, just set your knees down gently and find your way back into a child's pose. So hips back towards your heels, forehead to your mat. And again, we'll take a couple rounds of breath in this first child's pose. Maybe you wanna move your hips side to side a little bit. Maybe you wanna roll your forehead side to side or walk your hands side to side. Breathe deeply into your low back. All right, so breath to movement. Simple little flow. Next time you inhale, rise up into your cow pose. So heart lifts, tailbone lifts, front ribs spread. Exhale, cat pose, spinal flexion, curl in. Beautiful breath. Find a neutral spine, tuck your toes, lift your knees, lift your hips, inhale into down dog. So lots of length. Exhale, set your knees down gently and hips to your heels. Child's pose all the way to emptiness. Just like that with your breath, inhale, cow pose. Final extension. Exhale, cat, round, spinal flexion. All the way to empty. And then nice and neutral, tuck your toes under, lift your knees, press your hips up and back, down dog, breathe in. Exhale, knees to the ground, child's pose, sit back all the way to emptiness. And we'll do that just one more time. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cow pose. Beautiful breath. Come back to a neutral spine and find your way back to down dog. Inhale, lift your hips high. Exhale, set your knees down gently, child's pose as you exhale all the way to emptiness. This time, rise up to hands and knees. We'll take thread the needle. So knees at least hips with distance apart. Take your right arm out to the right, reach it all the way up towards the ceiling, breathe in. And then exhale, thread your right arm underneath you, reach through as far as you can, gently rest down on the outside of your shoulder and outside of your head. Take some deep breaths into your back body, so in between your shoulder blades, back of your heart, back ribs, low back, 
Nice job, you guys. If there's any way you want to work this pose on your own, feel free. You've got a couple more breaths. If your left hand happens to be lifted, bring it back to the ground. On an inhalation, unthread your right arm. Reach it out and up one more time. See if you can reach a little higher. You might even lift your left fingertips. Exhale, right hand down. And then before we move to the other side, take two or three clockwise circles with your hips. So all the way around, biggest circles you can make, fullest range of motion you can find. And just feel whatever there is to feel. What feels good and what doesn't feel good? What feels stiff? What feels tender? Find your way back to neutral. As you come into a neutral spine, again, make sure that your knees are at least hips width distance apart, perhaps a little wider. Left arm out and then left arm up, inhale. Exhale, thread it underneath you. Reach, 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 gently rest. Breathe into your back body a lot. So back of your heart, back ribs low back, and any way you want to work it on this side. So maybe you're pushing down with your right hand or your right fingertips. Maybe you're reaching your right arm up and back behind you, wrapping it around your low back. Or interlacing your fingers. You can use your right arm to gently tug on your left arm. Take a couple more rounds, soft through your face. Nice job, everybody. If you do have your right hand lifted, set it back down. Next time you breathe in, unthread your left arm. Reach it up one more time. Reach, 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 open, and then left hand to the ground. Take a few counterclockwise circles with your hips. So a couple, two, three, four, and then when you are ready, when you feel complete, downward facing dog. So no hurry, but eventually down dog is where we will end up. Nice job, friends. So back in your dog pose, spread your fingers really wide and push into the ground with the pads of your fingertips, especially your thumb and your index finger. So strong hands. And then like you're taking energy from the ground and moving it up through your arms and through your side bodies. See if you can feel a lift that comes from your center. So imagine a rope, an invisible rope attached to your belly button and it's pulling up, it's tugging towards the top corner of the back wall. Good Evan, so that means you need to bend your knees a lot or even lift high onto your tiptoes as you bend your knees a lot. Please feel free. Nice, Tracy. So go for that length from fingertips all the way up to your sit bones. Soft face. Your neck is an extension of your spine. So can you feel the length in the back of your neck? You guys look great. Nice poses. Take one more big, huge inhale as you push the ground away. Nice, obey. Exhale, gaze to the top of your mat. However you want to get there, forward fold. Once you have arrived, Pause and just bring your feet a little wider than your hips. So all the way out nice and wide. Keep your toes facing forward. As you inhale, kind of like a halfway lift, but with your knees bent. So bend your knees a lot like you're in a squat. Your spine is parallel to the ground, maybe fingertips on the ground. I feel like a football player ready to hike the ball. So Feel the length in your spine and your strong legs. Take one more in-breath, lengthen through the back of your neck. So gaze is down rather than forward. And then exhale, lift your butt up and reach the crown of your head down as you fold. Do that a few more times. Inhale, bend your knees, stick your butt out, reach the top of your head forward, fingertips down. Exhale, lift your hips, lift your sit bones, crown towards the ground, butt towards the sky. Just like that, couple more. Inhale, spine long, bend your knees. Good. Nice, Emma. Exhale, fold all the way to emptiness. Stay rooted through the inner edges of your feet. Last time, inhale, bend, lengthen spine. Exhale, forward, fold. If you want to, you can leave your feet where they're at, or if you'd like, you can walk them in, hips width distance, or even big toes touch. So however, however you prefer, next time you breathe in, 
come to your halfway lift. And if you like that variation with knees bent, go for it. Exhale, fold. And then this time we'll rise. So see if you can rise with a long spine. Bend your knees if it helps. All the way up, arms overhead. Hands to heart center as you exhale. Slow with your breath for a moment. Inhale, high mountain, reach up. Stick your butt out behind you. Bending your knees might help a lot as you dive down. So long spine as you dive, then fold in. Crown towards the ground, but towards the sky. Lift halfway as you breathe in. So butt sticks out. Bend your knees if it helps. Exhale, fold. And from the press of your feet, heart leads. Long spine as you rise. Arms reach overhead. Hands to heart center. Exhale. Thanks, Charlotte. One more time like that. So much awareness. Inhale, high mountain. Slow dive. Hinge at your hips. Take your time and fold all the way to empty. Beautiful work. Lift halfway as you inhale. Nice, Kirsten. Exhale. Fold in. Press into your feet. Bend your knees if it helps. All the way up. Straight spine as you rise. Arms reach. Nice, James. And hands to heart center with your exhalation. Nice job, friends. Inhale, take your arms up. And then pause right here and sit back into a chair pose. So weight in your heels. Your butt is reaching back behind you rather than your knees coming forward. So make sure you can look down and see your toes and make sure all of your toes are facing directly forward. Yes, good. If your feet are not already hips with distance apart, bring them hips with distance apart. We're gonna move into a twist. Left hand comes down in between your feet or you can have a block under your left hand or you can have your left hand forward a little bit if that feels better. Right arm to the sky. If you would like, you can wrap your right arm behind your back. If and only if you want to, left hand can reach up and possibly your hands clasp to find a bind. Sit back, weight in your heels, knees nice and even, level with one another. Spine is long. Yes, very good. If you're in the bind, really try to open through the right side of your heart. Open through your right shoulder, wherever you are at, my friends. One more huge breath. Work your twist as you exhale. Bottom of your exhale, unwind, forward fold. Pause in your fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Bring your arms to the outsides of your legs, hands behind your ankles, forearms behind your calves, elbows behind your knees. So you might have a huge bend in your knees right now. Once you've got your arms behind your legs, Start to press arms into legs and legs back into arms. Lift your butt up. Reach the crown of your head down. So it's an active forward fold. Good, Celeste. See if you can breathe into your back body. See if you can feel your core and use it to lift your butt a little bit higher. Soft base. Try not to clench your jaw. Take one more round. Lift your butt up. Crown towards the ground. Butt towards the sky. All the way to emptiness. Then release. Halfway lift. Lengthen. Realign. Inhale. Good job, you guys. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to a plank position. So top of a push-up. We're going to get right into it. Side plank, right hand is your foundation. Roll to the baby toe edge of right foot, left arm to the sky. Lift your hips really, really high. So lifting your hips will help take weight out of your wrists and your shoulders. So you're using your strong side abdominals rather than just sinking into your shoulder and your elbow and your wrist joints. Maybe reach your left arm forward. Yes, awesome, Liz. Maybe float your left leg up to your personal fullest expression. Take one more round. Now listen carefully. Slowly, left forearm to the ground. Roll onto the baby toe edge of your left foot. Modification would be stepping your right foot down in front of you. Put weight in your right leg if you want. And that will help take some weight out of your upper body. Lift your hips high, maybe right arm reaches forward, bicep next to your ear. So find your own variation. Maybe your right leg floats up. Awesome, Brooklyn. Feel your strong left side abdominals. Take one more round. Good, you got this slow motion forearm plank, full forearm plank. So both forearms to the ground. Feel your strong core, navel to spine. Feel your strong shoulders, push the ground away. 
draw your belly button in and up. Now one arm at a time with your strong core. See if you can press back up to your hands, high plank. Yes, top of a push up. inhale, push the ground away. You're almost there, I promise. Exhale all the way to your belly. Yay. All right. From your belly, we'll find a Spider-Man Cobra. So hands nice and wide up on your fingertips. Inhale, your heart lifts. Doesn't have to be super high. Exhale, take a little twist to your right side. Left shoulder dips down as you gaze over right shoulder. Inhale, back to center, pressing the fingertips. Lift your heart. Twist to the other side as you exhale. Inhale, back to center. Take that one more time each way, moving at your own pace with your own intentional breath. Slowly, mindfully, nice job. And then eventually an inhale will bring you back to center. You can hold that as long as you want. However you'd like, find your way to a downward facing dog, no rush. All right, from your dog pose, next time you inhale, take your right leg to the sky. So I don't care how high it goes, but try to make your right leg strong. So imagine that you're stomping your right foot on the ceiling or on an invisible wall behind you. You're pushing up, rooting up with your right foot. And at the same time, you're rooting down through your fingertips. Big deep breaths, take one more inhale. Right leg long, strong, powerful. Nice Tracy, nice Cali. Exhale, right knee to your nose, round, hollow out, empty out, then step forward super softly. Today, we're gonna rise up into warrior two first. So back heel pivots down, cartwheel your arms up. Yes, back foot is parallel to the back edge of your mat. And your front toes face directly forward. So hips are open. Thanks, James. So allow your hips to open. Allow your shoulders to open. Everything is opening towards the windows. Your gaze is over your right fingertips. Slow and steady with your breath. So feel your strong foundation through your legs. And then focused and alert, yet calm and relaxed all at the same time. Next time you breathe in, move into side angle pose. So reach forward like you want to touch the front wall. Reach, reach, reach. And then right elbow might come to right thigh. Right hand might come to a block or the ground. Left arm to the sky or left arm can reach forward. Bicep next to your ear until the length in your left side. Nice, Evan. So imagine your heart wants to look up. Rather than turning your heart to look down, let it stay open. If you would like, half or full bind is more than welcome. But if you take the half or full bind, try to let your heart stay open. Don't close it off. So sometimes less is more. You choose what works best for you today. Take about two more rounds. Your personal fullest expression. You guys look so good. Nice work. Awesome, Emma. From side angle, my friends, we'll move into a balancing pose. Half moon. So right hand to the ground, maybe left hand to left hip to make the transition. Right hand could also take a block if you've got one. And then back foot floats up, back leg strong and powerful like you're stomping it on an invisible wall. Yes, so nice. Everything is still open. Your hips are still open. Your heart is still open. Squeeze through your outer right glute. It's called your medial glute. That's gonna help you open through the front of your hips a little bit more. Last couple of breaths in your half moon. If there's any way you wanna explore, anything you wanna create here, play with, get curious about, go for it. Nice, Celeste. Ah, very good, everyone. See if you can come back to a warrior two stance. So possibly a soft landing. If not, no big deal. Once you've arrived, take a moment to adjust if needed. Nice, Pam. And then straighten your front leg. Parallel your feet, so all of your toes now face towards the windows. Arms reach up as you inhale. Exhale, dive down, wide-legged forward fold. You can absolutely stay in your wide-legged fold and work it the way you want to. Invitation 
to move into Skandasana. So only if you want to, you can come with me. Fingertips on the ground. Walk your hands towards the back edge of your mat. Spin your back toes towards the back edge of your mat. And then see if you can spin your front toes to face up towards the sky. Keep your back heel down if at all possible. If you take the variation with your heel lifted, it's really just a completely different variation. You're getting something totally different. And how to adjust is an adjustment of your pelvis. So you can play around with it if you want. If you've got your left heel on the ground, then imagine your heels are magnetized. So squeeze them towards each other and see if you can lift your arms up. Maybe even reach your arms to the sky. Maybe even interlace your fingers and press your palms up wherever you have chosen to be, my friends. Your pose, about two more breaths. Everybody meet in a wide-legged straddle position and a halfway lift in your spine. So legs long, spine long, fingertips down, bend your knees if needed. Crawl your hands to the top of your space and rotate your toes to face forward so you're in low lunge. From low lunge, root into your front foot and float your back leg to the sky standing splits. So right foot roots down, left leg floats up. I do not care how high. Active through your left toes. See if you can spread them. Yes, relax your neck like you would in a forward fold. Good, Cali. See if you can find a connection to your center. Belly button draws in and up. Take one more inhale. Exhale, set your left foot down at the top of your space. Forward fold. You can give your right leg a little shake out if you want. Walk your feet out to the width of your yoga mat. All the way out nice and wide. And if you can keep your toes facing forward, awesome. Otherwise, heels in, toes out. Low squat, malasana. So... Heels stay down, elbows at inner knees or inner thighs, hands at your heart. Good. So stay here and just breathe or option to add a twist. Bring your left arm out. So your arm is pressing into your leg, leg back into arm, and then right arm to the sky, gaze up. If the bind is in your practice, if it's available, you're welcome to take it. Try to keep both heels down. Open through the right side of your heart. Take one more deep breath, twist. And then bottom of your exhale, switch. So unwind, right arm to the right. Press arm into leg, leg into arm. Use that as gentle leverage to open. So open through the left side of your heart. Gaze up at your left fingertips. Both heels stay on the ground if at all possible. See if you can pick up your toes and spread them. Even if nothing happens, have that intention. One last round. And bottom of your exhale, let it go. Fingertips to the ground, hips to the sky. Heel toe your feet in however you like them. Ah, find your ujjayi breath. On an inhale, halfway lift, realign. Exhale, bow and fold. Let your arms and head hang heavy. Roll up one vertebra at a time. Really, really, really slow. Slow as you can go. Nice, so little bend in your knees or big bend in your knees is welcome. At the very top, your head stacks and take a few rolls with your shoulders up, back, and down. And then eventually just come to stand in what's called mountain pose, Tadasana, arms out to your sides, palms open. So stand like you are a mountain, embody a mountain, root down through your feet. Root up, draw up through the crown of your head. And then broad through your shoulders. Close your eyes and feel from the inside whatever there is to feel flowing through. Feel your breath. Stay as you are. Fill up as big as you can and hold. See if you can take an extra sip just like we did at the beginning of class. And sigh it out your mouth. Ah, good job. High mountain pose, ujjayi, breath, reach up. Exhale, chair pose, sit back, weight in your heels, butt reaches back. So it's like you're reaching your butt back towards a chair that's just a little too far behind you. Yes, you should be able to gaze down and see your toes, no problem. And invitation to bring your feet hips with distance if they're not already. Moving into our twist, right hand comes down in between your feet, left arm to the sky. You're welcome to use a block 
underneath your right hand. You're welcome to bring your right hand forward a little bit if it feels like too much in between your feet. Left arm can reach up or left arm could wrap behind your back. If and only if you want to, option to move into a full bind. So reach your right hand up and clasp. If you've got the clasp, try to stay open through the left side of your heart. Wherever you're at, nice Liz. Your butt is reaching back. Your spine is nice and long. Awesome, Kirsten. Weight in your heels. Breathe. Can you feel your breath moving down into your belly? Take two more. Ah, good work. Beautiful poses, everybody. Very bottom of your next exhalation, all the way to empty, and then unwind into your forward fold. This time in your forward fold, invitation to wrap your peace fingers around your big toes. So bend your knees a little or a lot, however much you need to, to get that grip. Peace fingers around big toes, index, middle finger. And then see if you can keep your fingers around your big toes and try to find a halfway lift. So it might mean you bend your knees like we did at the beginning. But stick your butt out, reach the top of your head forward. Now exhale, crown towards the ground, but towards the sky. Use the leverage of your fingers, pulling on your toes to go a little bit deeper. Good. You might be able to reach your elbows out to the right and left a little bit. Breathe into your back body. Breathe down the backs of your legs. Yes. Relax your neck. Head heavy. Feel your strong core. Use it to lift your sit bones just a tiny bit higher. Last breath. Nice job, Cam. As you inhale, release your grip. Halfway lift, realign. Exhale, plant your hands, feet to the back of your yoga mat, plank pose. Here comes that super fun part. Left hand is your base. Roll onto the baby toe edge of left foot, right arm to the sky, side plank. So absolutely feel free to modify. You guys know that. Lift your hips super high. Maybe right arm forward and maybe right leg floats up at any point. So be in your pose and find your personal fullest expression. Let yourself shake and wobble and meet yourself right there. Big deep breaths. Awesome, Solve. Take one more round. Amazing, you guys. Nice, Sue. Slowly transition to your forearm side plank on your right side. So right forearm down. Nice, James. Roll into the baby toe edge of right foot. Feet can be stacked, staggered, or you can step your left foot out in front of your body for that extra little bit of support. So step onto your left foot if it helps. Yes. Lift your hips. So rather than sinking into your right shoulder, lift your hips. Feel your strong right side abdominals. Maybe left arm forward. Maybe left leg floats up. Your personal fullest expression. Lift, lift, lift. Last breath. Full forearm plank, stay strong, just a little bit longer. Strong core, strong arms. Back of your neck is long, an extension of your spine. Yes, you look so good. Now, keep your strong core, one arm at a time. High plank, back to your hands. You got this, high plank. Inhale, push the ground away. Nice, Callie, slowly lower to your belly all the way down. All right. From here, this time, move into a Spider-Man Cobra, but you might not go quite as high as you did before. We're going to bend our right knee. So bend your right knee, press into your right fingertips, and roll over onto your outer left hip. So reach your right toes towards the ground behind you. And just like we did when we twisted earlier, see if you can kind of let your left shoulder dip down as you gaze back over your right shoulder. Take one more deep breath. And then slowly release, switch to the other side. So right leg is extended, left knee bends. Press into your left fingertips and roll up onto your outer right hip. So it's, a, it's like a variation of shoulder pitching. Let your right shoulder dip down, maybe gaze over left shoulder. Your left leg is like a scorpion tail, toes towards the ground behind you. One last round. Good job. Slowly release. Let it go. However you want to find your way to downward facing dog. Yes. 
Ujjayi breath, so slow and steady. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Just take a moment, find strength in your left leg. So feel long line of energy moving from your fingertips all the way up through your arms, through your spine and your side bodies, all the way up into your left foot. Active through your left toes. Take one more inhale. See if you can use your strong core. Lift your right butt cheek, right sit bone a little higher. Exhale, left knee to your nose. So scoop out your belly and then step forward as soft as you can. Well, your two steps. So back heel pivots down, back foot parallel to the back edge of your mat. Windmill your arms up. Very nice, nice Sue. So bend your front knee, but rather than feeling like it's kind of falling inward towards your big toe and collapsing, feel it tracking outward. Nice, Tracy, towards your pinky toe. So Press into the outer edges of both of your feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Feel your front butt cheek wrap underneath you. Side angle pose. Next inhale. Reach forward. Reach, reach, reach. Slide your rib cage a little bit. And then tip it over. Left hand towards the ground. Right towards the sky. Or perhaps left elbow to left thigh. You could also use a block under your left hand. Right arm can reach straight up. Right arm could reach forward. So bicep next to ear and lengthen your right side or maybe half or full bind. If you go for the full bind, try not to let that compromise the openness in your heart and your shoulders. So stay open. Good, back foot rooted, outer edges of your feet pressing down. Nice, Evan, take your last breath or two, and then move into your half moon. So maybe you wanna use a block under left hand, otherwise reach your left hand forward, as you float your back foot up, try to keep your hips open. Good, Kirsten. Keep squeezing. So outer left butt cheek is squeezing like you're trying to wrap your butt underneath you rather than stick it out behind you. Variations are welcome. Make sure your breath is right there. Last couple rounds. If your back leg is extended, strong and powerful. See if you can lift it an inch higher. One last round, one last deep breath. Where your two land softly, if at all possible. If not, no big deal. Take a moment to adjust if needed. And then straighten your front leg, parallel your feet. Take your arms to the sky, inhale. Exhale all the way down, wide-legged forward fold. So you can take this however you want. You can do your own thing, or you can come with me moving towards Skandasana again. So fingertips on the ground and start to crawl your hands towards the back edge of your mat a little bit. Pivot your back toes towards the back edge of your mat, and then pivot your front toes up towards the sky. If possible, right heel stays down. So it's like a half malasana, half low squat with your right leg. And then if you've got your right heel down, Imagine your heels are magnetized, so muscle energy, pull them together. It's an isometric movement. Maybe your arms float out or reach up or press your palms up. So you choose where you want to take it on this side. About two or three more breaths, wherever you're at. Maybe you're in your wide-legged fold. That's perfectly fine. Good job. If your left toes are facing up, see if you can flex them back. Last breath. And then meet in your wide-legged straddle, halfway lift position in your spine. So fingertips down, bend your knees if needed. Inhale here. Exhale, crawl your hands forward, low lunge position. From low lunge, standing splits, right leg floats up. So just like a one-legged forward fold, neck can relax. Thanks, Liz. See if you can fill your core. Use it to lift. Active through your right foot. Spread your toes. Yes. So nice, you guys. Beautiful. Take one more inhale. Maybe lift a little bit higher. Exhale, top of your space. Set your right foot down. Left leg gets a little shake out if it needs. Good. 
Walk your feet out to the width of your mat. And if you can keep your toes facing forward, go for it. Otherwise, heels and toes out. Low squat again, Malasana. From low squat, only if you want to, option to play with your crow pose or any other arm balance that you might be working on in your practice. So if you want, you plant your hands out in front of you, lift your butt up. Kind of walk your feet in, walk your knees up on your triceps, lift through your waistline, gaze forward. And like your arms are a shelf for your knees, lean forward and see if you can float one, maybe both feet up, maybe big toes touch. So just play. Good, awesome, yes. And then after you've had enough play time, back to your low squat. Eventually, everybody just meet in a forward fold. So you can take your time getting there, but eventually just forward fold, adjust your feet however you like them. All of your toes face forward once again. Halfway lift position, breathe in, realign, stick your butt out behind you. Exhale, bow. Roll up really, really slow. Roll. Bend your knees. Head is the very last thing to stack. And once your head stacks, he rolls with your shoulders. Eventually, just standing in your mountain pose. One more time. Rooting firmly through your feet. Feeling the space inside of you. Feeling your breath as it moves through. Maybe close your eyes and feel yourself from the inside out rather than the outside in. Stay as you are. Fill up as big as you can. Hold. Extra sip. Side out your mouth. Ah, beautiful. Ujjayi breath. High mountain. Reach up. This time, just take it down slowly. Dive forward. Fold. Beautiful, lift halfway as you breathe in, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back. This time, take your vinyasa however you want to. Take it on your knees, you can skip it completely. You can add a push up or two. End up just in child's pose. So sit back and rest. job friends few grounding breaths breathe into your low back might feel nice to sway your hips side to side to roll your forehead side to side And as you are ready, downward facing dog. All right, down dog, ujjayi breath, fire it up. Inhale your right leg high, and then peel your right hip open. So bend your knee, reach your knee out and up. Squeeze your outer right butt cheek. You can stay here, or one more inhale here. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Use your strong core, as close as you can come. Inhale, three-legged dog. Open your hip if you want. Scorpion that right leg. Exhale, right to right. Aim for your armpit, super high on your arm. Yes, inhale back up. Open your hip if you want. Now everybody, knee to your nose. Get as close as you can and then step your right foot through. And then this time, rise up to crescent lunge. So strong through your legs on the ball of your back foot. Take your time to rise. Beautiful. So le legs are your strong foundation. Hug in with your 
inner thighs and hug towards midline with your hips. So front hip pulls back, back hip pulls forward. Little tone in your belly, support your low back. And then pop up your heart, maybe even gaze up. So whatever you're doing with your upper body, that is creating your expression. So it's on purpose, it's intentional, feel into it. Take one more big inhale, maybe reach up a little higher. Maybe find the slightest back bend. As you exhale, bring your hands to the ground. And we're gonna move back into a standing split, but we're using it to get into our twisted dancer. So right foot roots down, left leg floats up, standing split. From here, Shiva squat, left knee tucks into the back of your right knee. Now from here, see if you can reach your right hand up and grab hold of your left foot. Maybe this is where it ends. This is where you stay and that's fine. Otherwise, press into your right foot and see if you can start to rise up, start to stand up. Once you're standing, start to work into your twisted dancer pose. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, hug in with inner thighs, reach your left arm forward, maybe lift your heart. Yes, good. So your pose, wherever you are at, however you needed to get there, maybe you came out and then came back in. Last couple of breaths, you're amazing. We're gonna meet back in a forward fold. So slowly and intentionally, when the love is lost, you can start finding your way back down. So both feet on the ground and just take a moment. Maybe your ragdoll pose and kind of bounce, sway, bob. Good job. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, plant your hands, feet to the back of your mat, high plank. Inhale at the top of your push up, push the ground away. Exhale to slowly lower all the way to your belly and just find a baby cobra. So lift using back strength. From your baby cobra, see if you can float your hands up and reach your hands back. Float your feet up and reach your toes back, locust pose. Hug in with your inner thighs. Use your strong mid back muscles, awesome Emma, to lift a little higher. So it helps me if I bend my elbows and try to squeeze them together behind me. Take one more inhale, lift, lift, lift. Yeah. And release. Find your way back. Give yourself a few rounds to get back to a down dog. So maybe you want to take some cat cows or some hip circles or a child's pose. Downward facing dog in your next few breaths. Once you're back in your down dog, just walk it out. Ujjayi, use your breath to support you and empower you through the rest of your practice. From your downward facing dog, next inhalation, take your left leg to the sky. And then see if you can use the mobility in your left hip to open your left hip. So bend your knee, reach your knee out and up, nice to less. So it's not coming from your hands or your shoulders. The movement comes from your left hip. Squeeze your outer left glute, lift your left knee higher. Stay here if you want, otherwise one more inhale. And as you exhale, left knee, right elbow. So twist across your body. Inhale back up, option to open your hips. So feel that articulation as you open. Exhale left to left, aim for your armpit. You can add a little push up if you want. Yes, inhale back up. Now everyone, scoop out your belly, knee to your nose, round and step forward super softly. Press and lunge, take your time to rise. So feel your strong legs, hug towards midline. Yes, so your legs are your foundation, your upper body is your expression. Whatever you're doing with your upper body, it's on purpose, it's intentional. So maybe you're smiling, maybe you're not smiling, maybe you're scowling, but if you're scowling, it's on purpose. So what do you want to invite in? What do you want to embody here? How could you feel into that? Breathe into that. Hey, Charlotte, take one more big inhalation. Exhale, hands come down. 
Move into your standing split first. So left foot roots, right leg lifts. And then moving slowly towards twisted dancer. So Shiva squat, right knee tucks into the back of your left knee. Both knees bend for a moment. Lift your left hand up, grab hold of your right foot. Once you've got your right foot, feel free to stay if you want right here. Otherwise, start to rise. So root through left foot and rise up. Right arm reaches up. Once you're standing, you kind of found your balance. See if you can start to work into your twisted dancer a little more. One side might feel totally different than the other. So honor that. Have compassion. Good. Awesome. Inner thighs hug in. Heart lifts. Big foot in the hand. Hand back in the foot. Coming into a forward fold as you're ready. Slowly if possible. Once you're in a forward fold, just hang out. Ragdoll pose. Bounce, sway, bob. <sighs> Good. Lift halfway, realign your spine, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, swing. Inhale at the top of your push-up. Push the ground away, lots of strength. And then all the way to your belly as you exhale. One more time, start with your baby cobra. And then from baby cobra, locust pose. Lift your hands, reach them back. Lift your feet, reach them back. Only if you want to. Options are either interlace your fingers or full floor bow. Bend your knees, reach back, grab hold of your feet or your ankles. Once you've got them, kick and pull. Gentle leverage to work your pose. Everybody hug in with your inner thighs. Live, live, live through your heart. So not your head, but your heart. Strong back muscles. Awesome, Liz. Good. Breathe down into your belly. Active feet. Spread your toes. One last round. And Celeste. Awesome, Emma. Let it go. Ha. Take a moment. Just rest on your belly. You can turn your head to either side. You could rock your hips a little side to side. You could also windshield wiper your shins from side to side. And then in your next few rounds, downward facing dog, you can get there through some cat cows, maybe a child's pose. Ujjayi breath. All right, friends, down dog. Inhale your right leg to the sky. And exhale, pigeon pose, right shin to the top of your space. Set your body down nice and easy. So right knee towards the outer right edge of your mat. Active through your right foot, right toes, like you're trying to spread them. And then hug in. So just like we would in a crescent lunge, front hip pulls back, back hip draws forward. Keep pulling your front hip back and up as you take your heart forward and down. Send your breath down into your outer right hip. Soften your face, unclench your jaw. Ah. <sighs> 
Take just about three or four more breaths. Open mouth size at any time. Uh, and then start to lift your upper body. And we're going to ease our way onto our outer right butt cheek. So let your hips open, let your back knee bend and kind of plop onto your outer right butt cheek. Once you're there, adjust so that your front shin is exactly parallel with the front edge of your mat. So that means if you need to kind of scoot your hips around, that's fine. And then scoot your left knee up towards your right heel. Left knee towards right heel. Bring your hands behind you. And then start to slowly lean back. Some of you may be able to lay all the way down on your back. Some of you might just be able to lean back a little. Don't let your inner left knee lift. So inner left knee is pressing down towards the ground. And rather than trying to create a back bend like you're lifting your heart, do the opposite. Knit your front ribs together. Draw your belly button down towards your spine. Go back as far as you can. So find your own personal edge and then just be there and breathe there. We're working the inner rotation of our left femur bone in the hip socket. For some people, this is a really natural movement, and some of us, like me, it's not comfortable, it's not natural. So wherever you are at, whatever you are experiencing, however this feels in your body, just notice, be with it. Ah, use your exhales to soften about three or four more. If you are laying all the way down on your back, focus on pressing your left back ribs down. Good breathing, everybody. Bottom of your next exhale, start to find your way back upright. So you can use your arms to kind of help you up. And then once you're sitting again, take both legs forward. So just both legs out in front of you. Give them a little shake out. And then we're going to work with a twist. But we'll keep our left leg extended. Bend your right knee, foot to the ground. And then step your right foot to the outside of your left thigh. Hug your knee in, sit up tall, and flex your left toes back and active. Take your right arm up, inhale, reach up. And then exhale, twist to your right. Right hand comes down behind you. You can keep your left hand right where it's at, or maybe you want to latch your left elbow. If the bind is in your practice, you're welcome to take it. And gaze back over right shoulder. Continue the twist with your neck. Feel your breath all the way down in your belly. Every single inhale, see if you can get it to move down. Every single exhale, all the way to empty. Very end of your next exhalation. Ever so slowly unwind. Uncross your legs and just come straight into cobbler's pose, feet together, knees apart. However close you want your feet is up to you. So don't get your feet so close to your body that you feel like you're going to fall over and roll backwards. So if that's happening, try to bring your feet further forward and you want to get on the front edge of your sit bones if possible. So you can kind of move your hips side to side, find the front edge of your sit bones, hold your shins or your uh, ankles. Pull your shoulders back and draw your heart forward. Inhale. The butt is sticking out behind you. Exhale. Hinge at your hips. Lengthen for as long as you can when you can't lengthen anymore. Upper back can round. And maybe you even walk your hands forward on the ground in front of you. So think of butt sticking out. Rather than tucking your tailbone under, try to reach your butt back and your heart forward. Melt with your exhales, about three more. Not rounding and trying to get the top of your head to touch your feet or the ground, but lengthening, trying to get your heart to your feet or past your feet.
Good job, friends. Take one last huge breath. Send it all the way down into your hips, your groin. And then slowly rise back up and come up one vertebra at a time. Lift your knees up. And we'll find our way back to down dog. You can get there your own way. Or if you want, you can lean back, balance on your sit bones for a moment in both poses. You can hold on to the backs of your thighs like I'm doing for a little more support, a little less intensity. You could also reach arms forward, extend legs, extend arms overhead. Hug in with your inner thighs. Try to stay balanced on sit bones rather than rocking back onto your tailbone. Whenever you've had enough, just cross your ankles. Rock forward. If you're feeling crazy, you can play with uh, jump back into chaturanga with bent elbows. You could also just step back. No big deal. Nice, Emma. And then move through a vinyasa or don't move through a vinyasa. Up to you. Downward facing dog. Ujjayi breath. Nice, James. Feel for a moment, right leg versus left leg, right side versus left side. Is there a difference? Maybe, maybe not. Inhale your left leg to the sky. And pigeon pose, left shin to the top of your space. Gently bring your body down. Good. So just like in our crescent lunge, we want to hug towards midline with our hips. So rather than plopping into it, even if you can, you want to plug the femur bones into the hip sockets. So we're not exploiting the hypermobility in our joints. We're actually stretching the muscles around our joints. And then once you're in your pigeon pose, use your breath to settle. Big and spacious, slow and steady. Feel into your own rhythm. Use the rhythm of your breath to anchor you to this moment. So the breath is always happening right now. It will always bring you back to present. Soft face, soft forehead, jaw. Good job. Take about three more. Open mouth size might feel really nice. And then very bottom of your next exhale, start to lift your upper body back upright and ease your way onto your outer left hip. So you can allow your hips to open. You can allow your back knee to bend a lot and then sit over onto your outer left hip. Once you're there, adjust however you need to so that your left shin is parallel to the front edge of your yoga mat. And then slide your right knee up towards your left heel. Hands behind you and start to lean back. Inner right knee stays down. So for some of us, it might just be a little bit, might not go very far. For some of you, maybe you're all the way down, laying down on your back. If you're on your back, focus on pressing your back right ribs down. If you're leaning back, try rather than creating a back bend, a heart opener, Try to find a neutral spine as best you can. So knit front ribs together, draw navel down towards the ground. If this bothers your right ankle or knee at all, then kind of play around with how you're placing your shin, your ankle and your foot, and also keep your right toes active. Inner right knee stays down about three or four more breaths. And one last round, huge breath. Exhale out your mouth if you want. 
Use your arms to guide your upper body back upright. And then just take both legs forward. Give them a little shake out for a moment. And then right leg will now stay extended. Draw your left knee in. Put on the ground with your knee bent and then step your foot to the outside of your right thigh. Flex your right toes. Hug your knee in and sit up really tall. Puff up your chest. Left arm up. Inhale. Get as tall as you can. Reach high. Exhale. Twist to your left. Left hand comes down behind you. Try not to put a lot of weight there. So you're just using your hand behind you to help you sit up tall. You can use your right arm however you want to. You can leave it as is. Right elbow to the outside of left knee. You might gaze over your left shoulder. Breathe. Soft face, not forcing anything. No energy of aggression. Just feeling into your own edge, softening breath by breath, last couple. And then very bottom of your next exhale, unwind your upper body. And again, bring the soles of your feet together, knees apart. But this time we're gonna lower onto our back. So make sure you have plenty of space behind you. And just ease your way all the way down onto your back, feet together, knees apart. So just rest for a moment in Supta Baddha Konasana. And if this bothers your low back at all, then you can scoot your feet a little further away from your upper body. If you feel good right here and you just want to relax here, please just stay here and ignore what I'm about to say. <laughs> if you want something a little more active, a little more challenging, and this will be a good release for your iliopsoas, the front of your hip flexors, front of your hips. So feet on the or feet together. Knees apart, especially press your heels together and arms just down or out to your sides with your palms facing down. When you are ready, lift your butt off the ground. So heels press together, lift your butt. As your butt lifts, squeeze through your outer glutes even more. And imagine somebody's pressing your knees down. As they press your knees down, you're trying to lift your hips even higher. So lift, 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 squeeze your outer glutes. Press down through the back of your head. Press your heels together firmly. Squeeze your outer glutes. Lift your hips. Take one last round. Knees towards the ground. Hips towards the sky. And then let it go. Bring your knees up. Feet on the ground with your knees bent. Feet out to the width of your yoga mat. See out your arms or cactus your arms. Take some windshield wipers slowly side to side. Each time your knees fall to one side, focus on working your top knee forward and away from your upper body, down towards the ground. Feel that length in your side. Slowly and mindfully, back and forth a few times. Feel into your hips, your low back. Feel your slow, steady breath. Eventually back to center, back to neutral, no rush. Find a happy baby when you're ready. When happy baby, you might rock side to side. You might extend one leg, then the other, even both legs at the same time. From your happy baby, if there are any last poses, finishing poses, any other stretches, movements you want to take, Give yourself about five to 10 breaths to move through those. And then eventually start to find your way into your personal final relaxation. So that might look like the traditional corpse pose. 
There might look like something different. Maybe you want to take your Shavasana in fetal position. Maybe you want to take it on your belly. Do you want to take it in a seat? Please take care of you. Set yourself up intentionally. As you start to find your way there, my friends, I'll read to you. This is a reading by Vex King. It says, if you are unhappy, start with the body. Nourish it. Rest it. Move it. If you are uninspired, start with the mind. Excite it. Expose it. Open it. If you are unmotivated, start with the heart. Find your why. Do something that matters. Be of service. For every undesirable state of being, there are at least three ways to elevate your mood and shift your emotional trajectory. If you are unhappy, start with the body. Nourish it. Rest it. Move it. If you are uninspired, start with the mind. Excite it. Expose it. Open it. If you are unmotivated, start with the heart. Find your why. Do something that matters. Be of service. For every undesirable state of being, there are at least three ways to elevate your mood and shift your emotional trajectory. So it doesn't mean that we never feel sad or angry or uninspired or unmotivated or depressed. It means we feel it all. We feel the full spectrum of human emotions. But then we respond from a place of love, from a place of presence, from a place of compassion. So when we feel unhappy, rather than just dwelling in that, attaching to it, identifying with it, we go out and move our body or we rest our body or we do something, to wake our bodies back up. When we feel uninspired, we read a book, do something to inspire our minds, to expose our minds to new things, new perceptions. There's always ways we can feel into what's going on, acknowledge it, be with it, honor it, and then respond from a place of love and presence. So in these last few moments, just notice how you are, acknowledge, how am I feeling, what's going on inside? And then when you go out into the world, you can choose from this place of awareness, from this place of presence. How do I want to respond? How do I want to show up? What do I want to create? So these last few moments are yours to simply just feel, to witness, to just be. Shavasana.
Take a deep breath in. Let it go, soften. And just start to come back into your physicality. Start to wiggle your fingers, your toes, or maybe even a full body stretch would feel nice. Eventually find your way into a fetal position on either side and give yourself a moment there. The fetal position is a nurturing pose and it's intended to feel that way. So soak some of that in, that nurturing. And let yourself feel held and supported by Mother Earth, the ground underneath you. Maybe your own inner feminine, your own inner mother. So what does it feel like to feel held, supported, nurtured? And using your arms, ease your way up into seated meditation, right back where we began. And as you come into your seat, you might notice, do you feel any different than you did 75 minutes ago? Has anything shifted? No judgment, just observation. Just curiosity. Gather your hands to your own heart. Close your eyes or soften your gaze. And we'll close our practice together with one big collective ohm. So please join me and don't worry how you sound or even how we sound, but focus more on the vibration we create together and on your own personal vibration that moves through your body and then expresses out your mouth. So start by exhaling, empty out, clear your throat if you need to. Breathe in your voice. Uh... Thank you so, so much for being here and letting me guide you. Namaste. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, friends. A wonderful rest of your Thursday. We'll see you next Tuesday, I guess. No Sunday class. If you know anyone who comes on Sundays, please tell them. No class. Yeah. Ruby. Mmm, smells good. Callie's here. <laughs>